Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're gonna to be going over the bones of the hip. So there are three main bones in the hip. So I have this little video here where I'm showing um, so disarticulated hip bones here. There are three bones in each. So I have the one flipped to show where the knee joint is, not, uh, not the knee, the hip joint. So that's the ball and socket joint where the, the big ball of the femur goes into. Um, so it's the deep ball and socket joint in the body. Then here I turn it in the correct direction to show how it then looks like. Uh, so we're gonna be labeling the important parts. So it's a whole bunch of different uh, spines, crests, notches, and so forth in the hip. And then I show it on Captain Jack here, uh, showing the layout uh, how the hip is in place when it's articulated and the structures that are around it. Uh, so that is this video. Uh, so it's a short little model video where I'm spinning everything around and so forth. So, but I want to bring this about right there. So now we're gonna label a bunch of stuff on this. So first thing we wanna focus on is what is which side is which? Now I do, I do have these laid out in the correct uh, orientation. So this one will be the right one and this one will be the left one. So now you gotta imagine this is an anatomical position, so it would be flipped, so right hip, left hip. You remember the observer versus the individual is different in this case. Um, now this also isn't the exact correct orientation. These hips are turned just a little bit uh, when in this position as well. Uh, so like a show on Captain Jack later, it is a slightly different to how this looks in the final form. Now let's label some of the major parts here. The first part is the big wing-like part at the top. Uh, this is called the ala. Uh, so each of these has like this ala structure, which is the wing-like structure. That's how you know what the superior side is. And then the inferior side is the side down here where we have these different ramuses. Now they get a different name depending on which one they are. So this top bone, so there are three bones in each side of the hip, uh, or three regions in each side of the hip to say. Uh, so you kind of draw a little crisscross through this region, the hip joint right here. This is called the, I'll label this right now, this is called the acetabulum. So the acetabulum is the big ball and socket joint of the hip. Uh, so you kind of draw, it's like a little cross like that through here. Now imagine that going probably a, a little bit more up there. Let's see, actually, oops, erased everything. Let's go back. I uh, just want to erase this line right here. Kind of goes up a little bit more like that. So, and then over here, um, the structure kind of goes uh, like this and then right through the hole, which is called the obturator foramen. Obturator foramen is that big hole in the bottom of the hip bone. So now what are the three main bones of the hip, uh, th well, three main regions of the hip? Uh, first one is the ilium, and then the one that has this big bulge on it, uh, this is called the ischium, and then this is the pubis. So this one over here, if we're looking at this one, pubis would be right here because this one spun just a little bit. This one is then the ischium. And then we have the ilium up here again. So now, what are some other ways to know that? I look for this big notch in this little spine right here as well. So this notch, this is the greater sciatic notch. And this spine right here is called the uh, ischial spine. So the ischial spine is on the ischium. So ischial spine. So if there's a greater sciatic notch, there's a lesser sciatic notch, which happens to be right below the ischial spine here. So I'll just write lesser um, SN for sciatic notch. I just can't fit it all right there, but that is a little notch right there as well. Um, so then the articulation part with the uh, sacrum happens right here, and it's on the uh, underneath side of uh, this one right here, so we can't see it too well. Uh, so this is called the auricular surface. Auricular surface. There's a lot of stuff to label on the hip. I'm gonna run out of room here. I'm gonna have to uh, restart it coming up here soon. 
Um, so there is the auricular surface. And then there's a, a spine right here and a little spine right here. So when this is in anatomical position uh, and it's articulated to the sacrum, this is the posterior aspect and this is the anterior aspect. And these little spines here are named accordingly. So this is the posterior, so I'm just gonna write for a P for posterior, superior, S, so posterior, superior, iliac, spine. And then this one down here, this one is the posterior, and if this one's superior, this one's inferior, iliac spine. Again, I know this is very small writing here, but I'm saying it out loud. So posterior superior iliac spine, that is the name of it. And this is the posterior inferior iliac spine. So that would also be uh, this one right there and right there on that side. We're just, it's a harder angle to see over there. Um, so if that's the posterior uh, superior and posterior inferior, well, guess what? There's a posterior uh, anterior, well, there's an anterior superior and an anterior inferior. And those are right here, if this is the anterior side. Uh, so right here we have the anterior, uh, anterior superior iliac spine. So anterior superior iliac oops, spine. And then there is another spine down here. So that would be the anterior inferior <laughs> iliac spine. So I know, um, just that's tough naming these sometimes. Uh, now, also, one big, you know, easy thing to label on this is this crest up here. The top of this is called the iliac crest. So iliac names things in the ilium. Um, pubis, there's some different parts of the pubis as well, and it's named pubic. So iliac, pubic, uh, and then ischium is ischiole. So when we name things there. So this big blunt part on the ischium is the ischial tuberosity. So tuberosity. So ischial tuberosity. Uh, and then these are all arm-like projections here. Uh, so we have the ischial ramus. Now, I won't write all these out. I'll just write a few. So ischial uh, ramus. Remember, that's an arm-like projection. And then this is the pubic ramus right here. Now, there is a superior and inferior pubic ramus, so this part right here and this part up here. But I'm just going to label them generically as pubic ramus or rami if I'm talking about both. Um, so you also have those down here. So um, so inferior, superior. And then also on the pubis, there's another tubercle. <laughs> and this is the pubic tubercle uh, right up here. Uh, only a couple things to label on the hip. The big ones here are to know the three main regions. So we have the ilium. We have so here I'll box them in. We have the ilium, we have the ischium, and we have the pubis. So the three main regions of the hip, and then the hole is called the obturator uh, foramen, another important one here. Uh, the joint here for the ball and socket joint, that's called the acetabulum. It's another really important one. Now some of the other ones are just helping you orient it. Um, so here are just the different spines you find on it, the iliac crest and the wing-like structures being the ala. And then also if you're looking at this flat surface right here, this would be the um, a flat groove, one thing I didn't label. So it would be a fossa. Guess what the name of the fossa is? The iliac fossa. So like I said, I'm not labeling every single thing here. If not, I'd be really, really filling up um, <laughs> this drawing. So not too much more to label here. There's also some lines that are found in here. So remember sciatic part is on the posterior side. So there's a little line that goes back here. This is called the posterior um, gluteal line, there's an anterior gluteal line, and then there's also an inferior gluteal line right in here. But I wouldn't ever name those. You just might see those in the textbook if you're reading that. All right, so I haven't moved this video at all. So I do flip these around and show them in different forms. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. 
Uh, so if you are taking a screenshot of this, now would be a good time to do it. Uh, so I'm going to clear it now. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's move through here and just make sure uh, we're seeing all the different parts. So they're showing the acetabulum, the obturator for ramen down there. Uh, remember, this is the ischium, and that's the ischial tuberosity. And down there is the uh, pubis, and that's the pubic tuberosity right there. So then here you can also see the greater sciatic notch, the lesser sciatic notch, and there's the ischial spine. So the ischial spine is another way to help yourself remember where the ischium is. Because sometimes it's difficult to figure out ischium versus pubis. If you find that ischial spine under that uh, greater sciatic notch, it gives you a hint as to which one is labeled. So as we move through this video again, um, again I backed up a little bit right here, uh, but we go through this, we see that greater sciatic notch, uh, the lesser sciatic notch, we see the obturator for ramen. Now I'm going to flip it over, and this is how it actually looks in the individual. So this would be the right hip, this would be left hip. Now you see each ala sticking out here, you see all the little spines and stuff sticking off, and again, you see that greater sciatic notch. So you know this is turned and on the inside then, and that's one way, one important way to differentiate the hip. Uh, so now if we're looking at it, on the individual, but one thing I didn't uh, mention on the previous one here, because there's so much to mention, um, is this little line that's right here. This is called the arcuate line, uh, and, it's, and it's the beginning of the pelvic brim, and that's, I didn't mention it because it's going to be looking at it here. So there we see that pelvic brim going around the outside of the hip there. So here we see the alas. Now we don't see the sciatic notch here. Now one thing we do see here, so this is the anterior aspect. So this would be the anterior superior iliac spine. And down here is the anterior um, inferior iliac spine. So there's you can, you can see the spines a little better. Um, and then over here on the other side are the posterior ones. Uh, so then here is also the pubic symphysis, so the pubis, uh, two different pubi, um, joined together right here in that area of fibrocartilage called the pubic symphysis. And then right here we have the pelvic brim going around. And then back here you have the sacrum and the coccyx, of course, as well. And this is the, the joint that forms right here. It's called the sacroiliac joint, um, another important thing. So yeah. Those are the main parts. I do show the posterior aspect as well, so let's switch over to that. And here we see the posterior aspect, and again, that sciatic notch, that big, guess what goes through the sciatic notch? Huh, the sciatic nerve. And guess what goes through the obturator foramen? The obturator nerve. Um, so yes, that's where they get their names. Uh, it can help you remember that when we get to the nerves, arteries, and veins as well. Uh, so we see that greater sciatic notch on the back here. Here's that ischial spine then there's a lesser sciatic notch then and this is that ischial tuberosity on the back so a major uh, ligament attachment site a uh, very important one as well uh, and then yeah that's all the important features of the hip and now i know there are a lot but they are important and next next video we're going to be going into the femur the rate the, the femur the tibia the fibula and the ankle and that will finish up the appendicular skeleton so if you have any questions feel free to reach out and let me know but if not i hope you all have a great day and bye bye